Hello everybody and welcome to our winter book video. So last year I showed you our winter books but we also had some of our Christmas books in there too. This year it's just winter books. These are the books that are going to be out from now until February for winter and I'm very excited. <laughs> You can see that I am actually going to leave on the seed that grew the tree. This is a poetry book and it's so beautiful. We love this and it has a poem for every single day of the year and then nature based poems. So I'm going to actually leave that there because we have that all year round. And now it's time to bring out the winter books. So the first winter book that we've got is Goodbye Autumn, Hello Winter by Kennard Pack. And this is a lovely book. It was actually given to us by um, one of our readers on Instagram and I'll quickly show you through it it's got these lovely illustrations and it takes you through the transition from autumn to winter winter by Shirley Hughes you know that I love the seasonal series by Shirley Hughes they're a mixture of, sort of short stories and poems based around the season of winter got Gerda Muller's winter book too this is a lovely pictorial book, no words, and it takes you through all the sort of winter activities and that kind of thing. Another fun favourite is the Pippa and Pele series. This is Pippa and Pele in the Winter Snow. This is a lovely little cute book, very simple story, and it's fun for when the snow comes. I thought I'd try out Winter by Ali Busby. We really enjoyed the Autumn by Ali Busby, so we thought we'd give this one a go too. It's a very simple story of going outside, playing in that was Toby, <laughs> playing in the ice and the snow, and then having meals inside, feeding the birds, and playing dress up inside. So very good for a young toddler who's just learning about day-to-day -day activities. I think her series are quite good. Winter Song, uh, this is a return from last year. This is a really lovely little story about a little robin and his transition into winter from autumn and I love this. Very Long Sleep by Polly Noakes. We got this last year and it is so gorgeous. The illustrations are lovely. Great about um, these animals and they wake up from hibernation and I actually feel like I just read this so I can't believe I'm bringing this back out already. I've got Snow by Walter Delamere illustrated by Carolina Rabi. This caught my eye because it is absolutely stunning. Those illustrations, quite Christmassy. You can see this Santa in this one. Um, a quite Christmassy book, but I'm actually going to put it on our winter shelves because it talks about snow in a really beautiful way. And that alone makes it, I think, one that will last um, until February. Children by Sybil von Olfers. <laughs> this is nice for slightly... <laughs> This is nice for slightly older children as well. It's a slightly longer story. We have The Mitten by Jambret. This is a traditional Ukrainian story, I believe. Kind of like a folk style. Nicer for a slightly older child. We have The Gruffalo's Child, which is a nice wintry story with snow and animals. I'm really excited about this book, Sleep Tight Farm. A farm prepares for winter. As you know, we live on a farm, so I'm really fond of books that sort of show our life. And just look at that beautiful picture. It's so stunning. And I think Rupert will adore this, and it'll be one that will grow with us as well. It's got all the activities that we do here on the farm, and it's very beautifully illustrated. Then I've got Winter Dance by Marion Dane Bauer. And um, this is a really gorgeous, chunky board book, actually, with a nice story that would do um, for young children as well. Lovely, lovely illustrations and just follows the fox around. Haven't read this at all yet, but it looks very promising. So that's Winter Dance. Finally, we've got Winter Story by Jill Barklam. You know I love Brambley Hedge and Rupert loves the illustrations. So... I will use this as a simplified story. He's too young for it, he's only two, but I love I love these stories so much and I look forward to reading them to him as he gets older as well. One of the nice things to remember when you're doing these kind of seasonal books is that your children can grow into stories. So if you've got a storybook here which would work for um, a slightly older child, well, you know, young child up to maybe seven, you can completely shorten these stories. So 
you can just say, look, mouse, and just talk about the mouse, whatever, and just make this, abbreviate the story and make it really easy for them to understand. And as they get older, you can start reading the story and eventually they'll be able to read the story themselves. So don't be afraid of buying books that are slightly older. If the illustrations really appeal to you or your child, give it a go because when you're reading with your children, it has to kind of be a mutual thing to some degree. Obviously, those are going to be the books that they love. But there also needs to be books that you enjoy as well and that you can share your love and passion um, for with them. And these Bramley Hedge stories are ones that I loved from my childhood. And I love sharing that passion with Rue. And of course, if he doesn't take them, that's totally fine as well. Um, but yeah, now the next job is just to put all these books out on our shelves. I love these seasonal books they add so much joy pleasure and give us a bit of routine and rhythm to the, the month so yeah I'm really really excited to dive into those tonight and read a nice one so thank you so much for watching um, and I hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe subscribe if you did and I'll be back soon with another video bye